Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm just going to quickly go over a definition of mechanical efficiency and also do a, a short example. So efficiency is just represented with the letter epsilon, and it is just the power output over the power input. And it's always going to be less than one. This ratio will always be less than one because of friction, basically. So if you ever see those videos on YouTube about free energy machines, that would basically mean that our efficiency would be greater than one and that that doesn't happen ever. So don't believe those. Um, you also sometimes might see this written as energy output over energy input. Um, that also counts as mechanical efficiency, just as long as the time interval is the exact same one for both of the energy quantities that we're dealing with. But otherwise, these problems are very similar to the power problems. So let's pull up the example that we had in the last video right here. And if you haven't seen the last video, that's okay. If you have, you'll just notice that I've just changed the... In the last video, we were looking for the power output and actually we're still looking for that but now we've just specified that there's a certain power input so basically the motor is just being supplied with 300 watts of power um, we want to figure out what the actual power output is and we can do that simply by using the conservation of energy equation and and then and then the power equations um, but so yeah well, first we're going to find the power output and then we're going to find the efficiency so to get started we use the conservation of energy equation which is just T1 plus V1 plus the sum of work done from 1 to 2 is equal to T2 plus V2. The capital T is kinetic energy and the capital V is potential energy. So we can just expand that out. And like the last video, uh, we'll be able to cancel out this term. This goes to 0 because H1 is equal to 0. So the whole term does. And because V1 is equal to V2, because we have a constant velocity, then we can just subtract one half mv squared from both sides, so those terms are going to drop off as well. So we can see that the work done is just going to be equal to mgh2, which is 1,471.5 joules. So that's the actual output of work that this machine is doing. Uh, you can even just put a subscript out if it helps you to remember. Uh, but basically, we're just going to plug that into the average power equals work over time taken equation. So we can just write that p average... And this is really the uh, p out, if you prefer to write it like that. It's just equal to u over t, and this is again the output work. So we just have 1,471.5 joules over the time, which is 6 seconds. And that gives us the average power output of 245.25 watts. So if you want, just to be really clear, we have just found this, 245.25 watts and then we just need to plug that into our efficiency equation so we have epsilon efficiency is equal to the power out over the power in which is 245.25 watts over 300 watts the amount of power being supplied to the motor and that ratio is just 0 0.82 so there we go that is definitely less than one as expected and the other way that we can refer to this is to say that the mechanical efficiency of this motor is 82%.